This is Math 142, Section 6.1. And we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, ways to measure angles, uh, the two systems that we'll use for it, uh, degrees and radians, and how to go back and forth between the, between the two, between degrees and radians. So let's, uh, let's start off by talking about an angle. Uh, what is an angle? So an angle is just a measure of, um, of rotation. It's how much something has, has rotated. So if I'm facing one direction, and then I, I turn and face another direction, that amount of rotation, that's, that's an angle. That's what, we're, that's what we're measuring. So I'm sure that you've, uh, you've kind of seen angles before, that sort of thing. But let me make a couple of points here. I just want to start with a center and then a line coming off that center. And uh, let me throw an angle on here. So I'm going to, this might get a little bit off because you can tell it's, you know, waves around a bit. I always have to get it into the same spot to get it working well. If I start here and I, I swing this out, you can see that number changing. That's saying how much I've rotated. So I'll try and get out here to a 45 degree angle. So when we say that 45 degrees right there, um, what we're saying is this rotation from here to here is 45 degrees. And, and one thing I want you to notice is if I make it, uh, if I make my radius, the thing that I'm swinging out uh, larger or smaller, and I swing out the same amount, you notice it's the same rotation. Even though this arc length is bigger out here, it's the amount that it's turned from here to here. So 45 degrees, again, is the, is the rotation. And, you know, this could, this could get a little off because... You know, I measured, I'm trying to do this by hand, but no matter what direction I go, 45, I'm on a little further, 45 degrees should be um, the same rotation. That is that idea of a, of a rotation. So let's, let's throw a, a circle on here. I should be able to, actually, let me make a center first. I'm going to want that. Uh, let me draw a line too. And I really want to get this centered. And I'm just going to make a circle around. Notice straight up is 90 degrees. Out here is 180. And on around like that. And I'm going to get rid of that protractor. Uh, we know that a full rotation around the circle, if I turn around and face the same direction, it's 360 degrees. So uh, knowing that helps me get at everything every other rotation here. So that means that half of a rotation, halfway around, from here to here, would be 180 degrees. And if I only rotate a fourth of the way around the circle, that should be 90 degrees. And so I have 90, 90 more is 180. So if I make a rotation all the way down to here, it's basically three of these 90 degrees, and that should be uh, 270. Now notice all of my rotations here have been going this direction, this, uh, this counterclockwise direction. Um, and that is the way that we are gonna, we're gonna measure angles in a counterclockwise direction. And we're going to um, start here, like facing here. So this 360 degrees is actually at the same spot as zero degrees is. Like if I don't turn at all, if I'm facing this direction, I don't turn at all. Or if I turn 360 degrees, I'm facing the same direction. So that's all the same. So, you know, we have some different rotations on here we could we could talk about. Notice everything, we can think of everything just as a fraction of 360 or as a fraction of 180. So like halfway, halfway is half of 180, which is, which is 90. Halfway to like facing the opposite direction, not halfway all around the circle. Um, or if I go to here, if I go halfway to 90, that's really one, two, a fourth of the way to 180. That's 45 degrees. And all of these measures, um, again, we can just think of them as a fraction of 180 or a fraction of 360, the rotations. Now, if I wanted to rotate the other way, let's say I wanted to rotate um, down instead of up, like I wanted to go this way instead of going all the way around this way. I end up at that 270 spot, 
but I didn't rotate 270 degrees. I rotated the opposite direction, so I actually rotated negative 90 degrees. And notice one the way that I could get there is I could be like, well, let's see, uh, 360 minus 90, that gives me 270. So negative 90 and 270, um, they're, they, they terminate in the same position. And angles that are coterminal, like I said, uh, terminate in the same in the same location. If I talked about something like uh, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, that would be you know about about this much, a third of 90, right? So it'd be about a third of that, or a sixth of 180. So uh, 30 degrees. If I want to end up facing that direction, one way that I could do it is just rotate 30 degrees. But there's a bunch of other ways I could get there. For example, I could go all the way around. I could go 360 and then go 30 more. So that would be 390. Notice these are coterminal angles. They terminate boop, in the same position, facing the same direction. Um, and there's a lot of them. I, I, and by a lot, I mean an infinite number, right? Because I could just keep adding 360 to this. I could go... Uh, 390 plus 360, uh, which is 750. That would look like uh, all the way around, all the way around again, and then 30 degrees more, and I'd end up there. Or I could go, uh, just another example is I could go the opposite direction, right? I could rotate this way till I'm facing that direction. And notice that's a negative rotation, and I could get there, basically it's, it's negative 360, it would be all the way, I didn't go all the way, I didn't go 30 degrees of it. So that would be negative 330 degrees. Now, notice um, I'm not saying 30 degrees is equal to these. I'm saying it's coterminal to them. So finding coterminal angles are just uh, really adding 360s and subtracting 360s. Let's take this idea of we kind of have this circle and we can measure these, uh, these angles around them. And then these angles are kind of fractions of 360 or fractions of 180. And let's apply it to our, to our other measure, which is radians. So if you remember, at the start of this video, I was talking about, you know, no matter how big this, I make this circle, the angle measures don't change. The angle measures are still, um, still constant um, because they're just about the rotation. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to define a radian. And so um, fix this measure of, of this, this radius, this thing that we're swinging around, to 1. So we'll just make that a 1. Um, and then what we'll say is we'll define, uh, we'll, we'll figure out what the circumference of the circle is. So the distance around a circle, um, circumference of a circle is, is 2 pi times the radius. So notice that um, if the radius is 1, the circumference of the circle is 2 pi. So this distance around the circle, if I, if I were to cut this and, and measure it, you know, lay it out flat, this circle distance, it's, uh, it's 2 pi. We're going to measure the rotation in terms of how big it makes the circumference relative to the radius. In other words, how many radians it is. So if I do a full rotation around, I've rotated... And what that means is this radius, kind of the distance that, that this has traveled, is 2 pi of these. So one full rotation, we're going to measure that distance as the rotation. So a full rotation is 2 pi in radians. So that means that if this is 2 pi, a half rotation is half a 2 pi. So that just must be pi. So notice that 180 degrees is pi radians. In other words, what we've done is we've traveled the distance of pi. We, we've traveled, the distance that we've traveled in this rotation is, is pi of these radians. You know, pi is just that number, 3.14, etc. cetera. Um, and the rotation is the same as this distance in terms of the radius. So if this is pi, that means that this rotation to here, this 90 degrees, must be half a pi. 
which would be uh, pi over 2. And uh, notice that 270 is 1, 2, 3 of these 90 degrees. So if 90 degrees is pi over 2, one of them is pi over 2, two of them is 2 pi over 2, or pi, three of them is 3 pi over 2. And then the full rotation is four of them, or two pi. So notice that um, we're, we can start to think of this in fractions of the full rotation or fractions of the, of the part rotation. These radians, they, they hold for, for no matter how big my radius is. But in other words, like if my radius is, is three for my circle, and uh, let's, just, let's just talk about if I had that radius of three and I did a full rotation, 360 degrees. Um, that's still 360 degrees. And it's actually still 2 pi. The rotation is still 2 pi. And, and here's why. The circumference of this would be um, 2 pi r, 2 pi times 3, which would be 6 pi. So notice that we've done this, this distance around the circle is 6 pi. But when we're measuring in radians, what we're saying is how many of these radii radiuses, plural of radius, how many of these radii would wrap around that? And so notice it's 2 pi times 3. So this distance of 3, if I took that distance, I could wrap it around here 2 pi times. So it's the circumference, this, this radian measure is really the circumference divided by the radius. The radius always drops out uh, and pushes us back to 2 pi. So when we're talking about radians, we're saying how many radii wrap around it. So if I think about this 45 degrees right here, what is that in, in, in radians? Well, 180 is 1 pi. And if I think about 45 degrees, 1, 2, 3, 4, 45 degrees is a, is a fourth of 180, right? There's four 45 degrees to get to 180. So it must be a fourth of pi, so it's pi over 4. Just, just gives us, radians give us a chance to kind of think about these, uh, these angle measures kind of as a fraction of pi or a fraction of 2 pi. I think it's easier to think of it as a fraction of, as a fraction of pi. Notice what I did to get to 45 degrees of pi over 4. I thought of 180 being pi. Um, if I have degrees and I have radians, one thing I know that, uh, is that 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. They're in the same spot. And I, if I completed that, that'll help me kind of go back and forth between the two, uh, the two representations. So for example, this 45 degrees, what I started to think of was like, what is that, uh, what is 45 degrees as a fraction of 180? So if I can think of about like 45 over 180, 45 goes into 180, um, four times. So it's a fourth. So 45 degrees, I could think of it as um, a fourth of 180. You know, 180 degrees divided by four gives me 45. And since 180 is just pi, that's the same as um, a fourth of pi, pi divided by four. They're equivalent. 180 degree rotation is the same rotation as a rotation of pi. So 45 degrees, a fourth of 180, is the same as rotation as a fourth of pi. So that actually helps me go back and forth between degrees and radians. So for example, if uh, 30 degrees, and I want to know what that is in, in radians, what fraction of 180 is 30? So I can go 30 divided by 180. That'll give me the fraction. And then I'm just going to say, that's in terms of pi, because I'm getting rid of the 180 now. So uh, 30 over 180, um, that is 1 sixth. So 30 degrees must be a sixth of pi, or pi over 6. Uh, let me show you something on your, on your calculator, which is, which is convenient. So if I look at my calculator, I went um, 30 over 180. And this is just if you're kind of feeling a little uncomfortable with the fractions. If I go 30 divided by 180 my fract on my calculator, I get 0.1666. Now, I might know that that's 1 sixth, but if I don't, um, notice I can go into the math menu here, 
And if I go over to, uh, actually, I don't have to go anywhere. It's this very first command. Give me the answer as a fraction. If I hit enter, it brings it back. Give me the answer as a fraction. One sixth. Great. Now I know what that is as a fraction. So uh, let's do a couple more about this. How about how about 60 degrees? Well, 60 degrees is two, 30, two of these 30s, right? So it should be two of these pi over 6s. So if I think about it that way, two of these pi over 6s should be pi over 3. So let me make sure that that's what it ends up being. Let me go through my, kind of my 60 over 180. I want to know what fraction of 180 it is. And then I'm going to multiply that by that by pi because I want it in terms of pi. Uh, 60 divided by 180 is a third. Yeah, it's pi over 3. So notice uh, what we have now is a little algorithm for getting from degrees to radians. So like let's say I had uh, 20 degrees. Notice what I've been doing is dividing by 180 and multiplying by pi, right? Because I'm trying to figure out one, what fraction of 180 this is and then multiplying it by pi to get it in terms of pi. So really, uh, what I'm doing to go from degrees to radians is I'm, I'm just multiplying by pi over 180. What fraction of 180 and then turn it into pi. So 20 degrees is uh, 20 pi over 180. 22 into 18, 9. Seems like that would be the same as pi over 9. And if you don't trust yourself to do the, the fraction reducing, you know, just, just grab your calculator and go 20 divided by 180. And again, in the math, give me the answer as a fraction, 1 ninth. So it must be pi over 9. So what we have here is this nice uh, method for going from degrees to radians. Just multiply by pi over 180. So if I'm going from degrees to radians, um, I can multiply by pi over 180. And remember, let that make sense to you. Um, you've seen what fraction of 180 the, the angle is, and then you're turning it to in terms of pi. Uh, the other thing that, that helps me with is if I want to go from radians to degrees, I can just divide by that, which would be the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of it, or multiply by 180 over pi. I'm going to clean up a little bit uh, the screen, and then I'm going to talk some more about this. Uh, let's let's go back and forth a little bit. So I want to turn those into radians. Notice what I can do is, is multiply by pi over 180. So this is the same as 120 div, uh, pi divided by 180. And you know I can uh, reduce. I can use my calculator for this. 120 divided by 180. Uh, express it as a fraction. That sort of thing, but this is the same as 2 pi over 3. So 2 thirds of the way to 180 degrees, or 2 thirds of the way to pi. Notice that 220 would be uh, 220 pi over 180, which is 11 ninths of pi, or 11 pi over 9. So notice that's, that's past 180, right? It's bigger than 180. It's 11 ninths of it. Um, in other words, 9, 10, 11, it's the whole thing, and then 2 ninths more. By the whole thing, I mean to 180. Negative 135, uh, negative 135 pi over 180, negative 3 pi over 4. A negative 3 fourths rotation towards 180. 27, 27 pi over 180, 27 180, this is 3 twentieths of pi. Great. Um, if I wanted to go the other way, like let's say I had like uh, 4 pi over 3, or I had 7 pi over 4, something like that. I wanted to go to degrees. Uh, my, my algorithm that I have is just like 4 thirds times 180 over pi. So notice what happens is now we're getting rid of the pi. That's where we're dividing by the pi. So we, we do this. And now what we have is 4 thirds of 180. So we're saying like what fraction of 180 is 4 thirds? This is 4 thirds of the way to pi, which is, which is past pi. And that should be the same as 4 thirds of the way to 180. And that I can just go, you know, what's 4 thirds times 180? 
So that would be 240 degrees. Uh, similarly, the 7 fourths, 7 pi over 4, 180 over pi. If you, if you understand what you're doing, you don't really need to do this part. You can just say, what's 7 fourths of 180? Because pi is 180. I want 7 fourths of 180. 7 fourths times 180, 315 degrees. Great. So now you know some things about coterminal angles. You can go back and forth between degrees and radians. Um, I want to I want to make one point. I just want to think about like if I just had one radian. Notice it's not in it's not written in terms of pi, but it's still a, a number. I just want to know how big one radian is. These are actually pretty big. Um, if I if I use my my algorithm from radians to degrees, I'm just multiplying one by 180 over pi. So let me do that on my calculator. Uh, 180 divided by, there's pi, that's times one, about 57.3 degrees. That's pretty big. So one radian, just one of them, is 57 degrees. One radian, remember what we're talking about is, is how many um, radiuses of the circle this is. And so if I have this, this radius and I make a circle by it, that distance right there, if I lay that out here, that's one radian, which is going to be like, uh, well, the full way around is 2 pi, which is, almost, which is a little more than 6. So that's about a sixth of the way around the circle. So one radian is, uh, is pretty big. All right. Uh, take a look at the problems in the, in the text. Give them a try. Uh, you know, look at, the, look at the chapter if you have more questions. Feel free to message me uh, through WAMAP or anything like that, and, uh, and good luck.